Hello and welcome to the episode 238 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Several live performances, the rejection of drugs, and the slow progression of the work on the White Album are some of the stories we'll be covering today. On the 26th of August 1960, the Beatles, featuring Pete Best on drums and Stu Sutcliffe on bass, performed Another Night at the Indra Club in Hamburg, West Germany, for their ongoing first residency there. In 1961, the lads, with Paul McCartney now on bass, performed at the Aintree Institute in Liverpool, their 24th night at the venue for a BK Promotions event. Moving on to 1962, the Beatles, now with Ringo Starr on drums, were on the stage of the Cavern Club for an evening dance event, sharing the bill with Mike Berry, a solo singer who had scored a hit with its 1961 release, Tribute to Buddy Holly. 1963. With the start of a new week, in keeping with what they had done in the rest of the August of this year, the Beatles started a new six-night residency at the Audion Cinema in Southport, another British seaside town. For the duration of the residency, they performed the role of a Beethoven, Thank You Girl, Chains, A Taste of Honey, She Loves You, Baby It's You, From Me To You, Boys, I Saw Her Standing There, and Twist and Shout. The evening was remarkable for the presence of a BBC's crew, filming the Beatles for a documentary on the Mercy Beat phenomenon, as we will explain in tomorrow's episode. On the 26th of August 1964, the Beatles continued their first North American tour, with the first show not to be sold out. The Fabs played the Red Rocks Amphitheater in Denver, Colorado, with 7,000 people in attendance and 2,000 empty seats. The concert was peculiar for the oxygen canisters placed on the stage. Unused to the thin air, the Beatles were often short of breath during the show, and the organization thought they might need an extra help. In 1967, the day after following the first Transcendental Meditation class with Maharishi Mahesh Yogi, the Beatles gave a press conference with the holy man. During the event, the Fabs announced that they had renounced drugs for good. The decision was probably the result of many things, but George Harrison's visit to Haight Hashbury, which we featured in episode 219, almost certainly played a part. The commitment to a no drug life won't last for long, though. 1968. Since leaving the Beatles on the 22nd of August, as we learned in episode 234, Ringo Starr had left the country to go on holiday in Italy. As he himself recalls in the anthology book, I felt I wasn't playing great, and I also felt that the other three were really happy, and I was an outsider. I went to see John. I said, I'm leaving the group because I'm not playing well, and I feel unloved and out of it, and you three are really close. And John said, I thought it was you three. So then I went over to Paul's, and knock on his door. I said the same thing. I'm leaving the band, I feel you three guys are really close and I'm out of it. And Paul said, I thought it was you three. I didn't even bother going to George then. I said, I'm going on holiday. I took the kids and we went to Sardinia. Since Ringo remained away on holiday, George, John and Paul, and balance engineer Ken Scott, decided to continue the work on the songs still left unfinished. Between 4 and 5 pm, Scott remixed the Mono Revolution 9, working again from the Stereo Master prepared by John Lennon. It was basically a copy of the Stereo Master, as it was impossible to recreate the piece in mono so that it had the same effect it had in stereo. Finally, in 1969, after the conclusion of the work on Abbey Road, George Harrison and Beatles assistant Mal Evans drove to Portsmouth, where they met Bob Dylan. The three spent some time together along with Dylan's family. In the evening, Dylan took a ferry for the Isle of Wight, 
where he was due to participate to the Isle of Wight Festival on the 31st of August. George and Evans returned to London. This concludes this episode of What A Fab Day. You might want to head to www.simonmas.com support to see what you can do to make sure that I will keep on producing the best music-related content I can. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.